Okay, live, things are gonna look a little backwards here tonight because, um, oh, I don't know if I can do that though with the board because my board's gonna be backwards. But I'm inviting a friend, a guest on, so I'm gonna flip my camera and I'm gonna teach this this way. And then when he comes on, I will flip it around. Yeah, you have to, otherwise my board's backwards and you all be all confused going, what's he talking about? Okay, so, um, yeah, so we're live with David Wardy tonight, Dr. David Wardy, and he is going to share as well. He's another one of our um, health centers of the future, platinum doctors who are trained uh, utilizing these fasts and everything that I've been describing to you. All right, let's get right to this because I want to bring Dr. David on. So is autophagy happening in you? That's the question, right? Well, we want to test our glucose and ketones as a way of determining this. As glucose drops, ketones should rise, and that is an indicator. Once we hit a specific ratio that you are entering into autophagy, or as I like to call it, max autophagy. So admittedly, I, I got this from a gentleman. He is a cancer researcher, Dr. Thomas Safry. He wrote a book, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. Brilliant book, brilliant man, doing a lot in the research of cancer. And what they had noted was, as the cancer tumors shrunk, they would keep shrinking as long as this was at a certain ratio, meaning your glucose being a certain amount in your ketones. I'm going to share that with you in a minute. So as long as that was at that target ratio, as he called it, um, we would see this autophagy occurring. So I said, well, wait a minute. Um, let's go beyond that. Let's see if we can utilize this uh, for fasting and regular purposes. And sure enough, it works. So let's take a look at that. And target ratio. It's at least a one-to-one -one ratio, and that equals your autophagy. And like I said, I like to call it max autophagy, but the key here is though at least a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning if the ratio actually gets better, then it's even a better thing, okay? So we look at the glucose and ketone ratio. So basically, when you get your glucose number in US numbers, okay, which is the 80, so to speak, right? But when you get your glucose, 70, 80, 90, you get that, right? You have to divide that by 18, put it in the European number, that's the 4.4, I'm keeping it very simple, and then it will match your ketones. That is what you put in the ratio, glucose over your ketones in the ratio. So you can see that wouldn't be a good ratio, right? We, would, we want the glucose to be smaller, and the ketones to be bigger, right? So this ratio is much smaller than the one-to-one -one ratio. Now let's look. Let's say the glucose drops to 65, divide it by 18, now you're at 3.6, and your ketones have risen to 3.8. So 3.6 and the 3.8, that's better. So you're better, slightly better than the one-to-one -one ratio, which is a good thing. Okay, so that's all you have to do to put your numbers in that ratio. We want to see the glucose get smaller. So we want the, this number to become smaller and this number to become bigger. All right? That's what we're looking for. Ketones higher, glucose smaller. So a one-to-one -one ratio after you uh, put it in the conversion, it gives you that baseline target zone. We want it to be at least a one-to-one -one ratio. If glucose went down to 60, this number would be even be lower. I don't, I'm not gonna do the calculations. If it went down to 50, this number would be even better yet. If, but here's the point. If this number dropped to 50, guess what happens to ketones? Ketones actually go up higher. So we even get a more dramatic autophagy occurring. All right, so think about this logically. As glucose drops, what's happening? The cells are saying, we need energy. The brain, it wants to live. So it says we need energy. It can't use anything but glucose. It can't use fat. It has to use ketones. So therefore, the innate intelligence speeds up fat metabolism, starts burning fat, produces more ketones. So ketones go up. Glucose is dropping because your body's not getting, it's not needing that fuel anymore. 
So as we get less and less carbs, right, obviously we're fasting, glucose keeps going down, 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 you're burning through your glycogen, less and less glucose, your body's compensating with an elevated ketone, and that's what we want to see. Now look, when, once you get to day four, you're going to see this number shift. You're going to see your ketones start to rise up. By day four and day five, some of you are going to be five, six, seven, and even eights on the ketones. So you can imagine your glucose at that point is dropping. One of the other things that Thomas Safery pointed out and what they noticed with the cancer patients was this. Even if you had high ketones, if your glucose remained high, they note that you really don't utilize the ketones. And other scientists have realized the same thing as well. Of course, your brain has to use them somewhat, but with the glucose rise that are still elevated, we notice that you don't utilize the ketones the same. You don't get the benefit out of the ketones. So we want to see glucose dropping and ketones rising. Again, some of you may say, my ketones are up, but my glucose isn't dropping. That will start to happen with more fasting, with more fat adaption, with more of the diet variation, feast, famine cycles that I taught you about. Go back and watch that video. It's the most important video I did. And many of you didn't watch it, I can tell by the views, but it is the most important video because that is the mitochondrial metabolic fitness that I talk about, how uh, we get the bad mitochondria to die. Bad cells don't adapt, they die. Good cells get stronger. So as we put these fasting and feast days in during the week, we're getting stronger mitochondria. And then when you do fast, you start to see better and better numbers. So that really is the magic, is we want as you get more and more efficient, that glucose gets lower and those ketones go higher. And that is a sign of maximum autophagy and therefore maximum stem cell uh, formation, therefore maximum healing, right? So now some of you may say this because as that shift occurs by day four, you say, gosh, I finally feel better. Some of you, some of you will go, wait a minute. My glucose is dropping, like you're saying, Dr. Pablo, my ketones are rising, but I still don't feel well. Give it a little bit of time. Your brain's just still not adapted to using ketones. It's still looking for the sugar. It will eventually shift over, typically day four. Some of you later day four to make that shift, but it will happen. For those of you who just, they don't, you don't get to these good numbers, right? Toxicity, no doubt, is the issue, and I'll talk more about that uh, on a later video. But that is typically the key with you all. And again, more fasting can work. Partial fasting instead of water fasting is typically a little better for you all. However, again, you know, cellular detox is really the answer. But we want to see this number dropping. Listen, don't panic. I often get emails saying, my gosh, my glucose is in the 40s. My question is, what are your ketones? Because if your ketones are six, seven, or eight, <laughs> well, you're gonna feel fine. And, I, and also, that's the next one. How do you feel? Actually, I feel okay, but my glucose being that low, is it okay? It is, as long as the ketone drops. See, that's the compensation for the drop of the glucose energy. The ketones should rise. And when that happens, max autophagy, you feel better, uh, typically, until your brain adapts. So give it that little transition on day four. Day three, for most of you, Tough day, I know, right? You're probably not quite there yet. Uh, for most of you, I think my wife's um, ketones, she was um, solidly in the fours um, today. Um, I didn't look at mine um, this afternoon. But anyways, in most of you, I found trying to think where her glucose, it was in her 50s already. Day three, day four, she'll probably be low 50s, high 40s. And she'll be somewhere probably five and sixes on the ketones. Me, with a fasting mimicking diet, I'm definitely seeing lower numbers, I have to admit. Um, I was 3.4 yesterday. Um, today, I think I was right around the same. Um, and it kind of was the same all day. So the food is definitely changing some things. It's gonna be really interesting to see where I, I, I land tomorrow. I have to say this too, that some of my uh, clients um, and, and my doctors would attest to the same. They do better with partial fasting, um, where they actually have better numbers is what I'm saying. Right now, I would say my numbers are a little worse than if I was water fasting. So we'll see if that transitions. Proving my point that you know there's different fasts for everybody. 
Some people do better, will do better with a specific fast, whether it's just a water fast, some people fasting mimicking diet, uh, partial fast, whatever it is. But again, I, I think that I, that's why you have to work with a practitioner to determine that. All right, let me flip my phone around here and let me see if I can get uh, David here. Um, I'm gonna flip my phone around. Okay, great. All right, uh, David, if you punch something in, maybe I can find you. Um, I'm looking back right now. I'm gonna invite him on here. Yes, I am here, okay. All right, punch it in one more time, Dr. Wardy, because I'm looking for the invite. All right, I'm by myself tonight, so you never know with these types of things, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'm not seeing the invite. Well, one more time. Sometimes we learn one thing, uh, David, is you sometimes have to go in and then uh, go back out and come back in. So you might want to try that. Let's see. Yeah, I, I can't. Let's see. Invite. Yeah, it's not giving me the invite, David. So go back uh, out and come back in and see. All right. All right, well, all right, he's here again. Yeah, I, I'm not getting the invite, unfortunately. Sometimes this happens where it doesn't give me the, uh, the chance to invite, um, which is really odd. Sometimes it's, it gives you the chance to invite and sometimes it doesn't. So, um, yeah, I, I apologize, folks. Um, well, look, I, we'll try to bring Dr. David on another night, but um, this is, or maybe I can tech shoot and, you know what, I'll try to bring him on um, maybe even uh, another apparatus here. So, um, anyway, this is, this is how you know um, if you're in autophagy or not. Uh, I'm going to finish this video and then I'm going to see if I can bring him on another way. So hang in there and I'll be back.